So, as you know, I'm going to talk about Keepas X, which is an open source password manager. And uh, I'll try to make this uh, talk a little more interactive. We have a smaller audience. And one thing I assure you, um, I'm a software engineer, data engineer, but trust me, this I'll try to make this talk as non-technical as possible because this is not a technical tool. This is a tool for for laymen, for lay users. So, uh, can you show of hands how many of you use password manager? Okay, which password manager do you use? iCloud. iCloud. Bitwarden. Bitwarden. Okay. Anyone else? Any? iCloud. iCloud. Okay. Great. Uh, anyone who does not know what password manager is, just I don't know what password manager is. Anyone? Okay, cool. So I'll start from that point. Uh, I'll start with what password manager is. So uh, I guess most of you folks, uh, most of you folks use some website or the other. You're on Instagram, Facebook, uh, your Gmail, something or the other. And and each of the websites that you log in into has Username has password, and in today's day and age, it has, it has been so bad that there are like tens and hundreds of these that every single person is using, right? The tens and hundreds of apps or sites where they use uh, uh, password. So, how do you remember password? Anyone who folks who don't use password manager, how do you remember your passwords? Not you, okay, not I am right. Notebook. Yeah. Notebook. Yeah. Notebook. notebook. Sorry? In the phone yeah, in, in the phone, okay. Uh, with a little more ports and so that uh, that's not what. <laughs> 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 that's a good this, yeah, to use. So, so uh, what happens in this process is that people tend to use something that's simple to remember, right? And here I have uh, most common, okay, that's 20, that's supposed to be 23. I don't know. <laughs> so, <laughs> anyways, the list didn't change between 22 and 23. It's more or less the same. These are commonly used passwords. and uh, there's a there's a field called uh, social engineering where people can guess your password based on some attributes or some some profile that they know about you. <coughs> so, which is the best way of saving passwords? Some people said notebooks. You can write them down. But not, how secure is a notebook? Let's say you leave it somewhere, you lose it, right? So that's why you need a password manager. With the password manager, your passwords are stored in an encrypted vault. Like imagine you have, you have your jewelry, right? Like gold. You won't keep it at home because how secure is your home? So you usually keep it in a bank locker or something similar like that. So this is uh, what password manager. So these are some of the password managers that I know of. Someone said they use Bitwarden, right? Yes. Yeah, you. So Bitwarden is the open source one, I guess, yeah. And have you self-hosted it? No, right now I use their own. Their, their own, okay, cool. So yeah, Bitwarden is one of the open source ones. These are the other ones that you see here. They are the proprietary ones. Uh, I was a LastPass user initially uh, for the pass for, for the before using KeePass XC, which I'm using right now for as my daily driver. I use I was using uh, LastPass for around four years, but something happened. There's a problem with proprietary pa password managers, and one of the problem is obviously that. Uh, as, as I'm using open source, the source is open, we know what happens in the background. When proprietary password managers, that's that's not the case. But they had some really weird business practices that I encountered. So I was I was using LastPass and they had this they suddenly had so it was a free password manager at that time. And they suddenly had this huge thing about we are doing some changes to the free password manager and they introduced some blockages like it would be only on one device and it won't sync to the other devices, my passwords. So I, if, if I access from my laptop, the passwords won't go on my uh, mobile phone, for example. So this is what I encountered. So, and like a couple of days back, I think on 19th of October, Dashlane did something similar as well. So they put similar restrictions. Again, I won't, I, I'll link the blogs here, but they did something similar. But this is okay, these are bad business practices, it's unethical, business is being unethical. But there was something even worse that happened last year. This is December 22. Uh, LastPass was hacked and they leaked a few uh, password vaults that people had. And that is when I was paying them and this just is loss of trust. Like okay, there are sometimes, sometimes something like Facebook gets hacked, so Gmail gets hacked, something like that is still okay but your password is getting hacked, come on. Uh, how much worse can things get? So I lost trust in 
property like if I switch from last pass to one pass, what what are the chances that same thing won't happen? So before I proceed, the standard disclaimer applies. Don't take my advice as something as a, a silver thing. Uh, it might be wrong. So whatever I say, uh, don't blame me. Take it with a spoon of salt. So let's start. Let's talk about key pass XC as password manager and how exactly it works. And depending on how much time we have left, I'll, I'll do a small live demo of it. So one of the things that KeePass XC, unlike uh, Bitwarden or any of these password managers, is that it does not run on cloud. It's a it's a software that runs on your local, on your laptop, or your. Uh, it doesn't really run on mobile, but I'll tell you what to do about mobile later. Everything is stored on a file, so everything that you do is a single uh, file on your hard disk. You can choose the encryption algorithm. Again, open source, so they give you a choice. What what algorithm do you want to encrypt? Again, it has pros and cons. Uh, multiple encryption rounds. Again, this is another choice you have. Usually, in those in the proprietary cloud-based ones, I don't know if you can do it in Bitwarden. Can you choose how many rounds? Uh, no, I don't think so. so you can choose how many times it encrypts. Um, using multiple layers of keys. So usually. Uh, Password managers do support uh, the, the the proprietary ones, the ones which are on cloud. They do support multiple layers of keys. But do you do you know if both the keys that you use are used to encrypt or no? Don't know, right? And that's when I, that's where I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you that you can use a hardware key for doing something like this. So the first step when you uh, when you use any password manager is to use a master password. Just because you use password manager doesn't mean you have to remember no passwords. You have to remember one password and that's the master password. So uh, this is a small trick. Uh, again, not the best trick, but how to create a password that you can remember. But it's hard to guess for people. Like it's hard to socially engineer the, social engineer the password. First thing, first and foremost, it should be a very long password. Uh, so it should be like around 30 characters. It should be easy to remember. So choose a long uh, this is usually people call it a pass phrase as well. Hmm. I think people who have worked with Linux would know it better. So instead of a word, use a sentence. So I choose something like this is a very long password string. This is the sentence. But there's a problem with this. It's a very, it says it says things like password in it. It says that this is a very long password. So it just tells what it is. But that's not what we want. We want something that's hard to hard to guess. But it's easy to remember. It should still be easy to remember. So you can choose something like a fun fact. Now the fun fact over here is one out of every five mammals is a bat. That's a fun fact, but it's in no way related to me. I just picked it from somewhere, just for it to be easy to remember. I'm not a biologist. I don't even love bats, but uh, it is uh, it is something that's easy to remember. Break the English language. For choosing master password again to make it even more hard to guess, break the English language. Uh, so it still reads. One out of every five mammals is uh, is bad. It still reads the same, but uh, it's it doesn't really look like English. Now, if you if you want to be a little more, if you want if you like pain, if you are like a masochist, you can even make it harder and uh, add special characters. And it still uh, reads one in every uh, five mammals is bad, but it's much harder to uh, to guess. It's, it's slightly harder to type as well. I would I would say, but this is. Uh, how uh, just a trick that I have to choose something that's easy to remember but hard to guess. What is this? Hardware key. Hardware key. It's a hardware key. So, uh, so I have this with me. I'll I'll show you a quick demo with with this as well when when I show the demo of the software. So, uh, the problem with hardware key is that uh, it's. <coughs> Slightly on the expensive side, so usually uh, it's, uh, this is the rate that it was yesterday. I'm, I'm not doxing myself with my uh, <coughs> code over there, but uh, the the rate is around. Yesterday it was around seven thousand. When I bought it, it was around five thousand. Uh, it's a very. I'm, it's not an open source thing. It's a very proprietary thing, but it's a very tough thing. It's dust proof, waterproof, crush proof. Like you can drive a car over it, kind of. So, so whenever you're buying a hardware key for your password manager, always buy two. You should have a pair, one with you, uh, one, one which you always carry, and one uh, in the locker at home somewhere. Now, uh, you have your passwords 
on a file on your machine. But what about if, if it's there on your on your on my Linux? I have it on my Linux laptop. Now it's here. What next? Like how will I get it on my mobile phone? How will I get it on my tablet? How will I get it? Uh, let's say on my work uh, machine, right? So there's something. There's another open source tool. It's called Sync Thing. It synchro. It syncs across the devices. So it's an it's a pretty amazing tool. It it it's it's kind of like torrent, but not really. It establishes P2P uh, connection with all your devices that you have uh, uh, that you have added, and it will uh, and it will uh, it will discover it over internet, and and you can whatever changes you make over here will automatically reflect across all other devices. Uh, I won't go too much in depth, but I just show a bit. Of, about how uh, this is how this is the website. Uh, I just show how I've done my configuration. So at home I have uh, my own uh, Raspberry Pi server. Uh, again, this is optional, but it's better to have because this is on 24/7, which means that if I make change anywhere on any of my devices anywhere in the world, my this Raspberry Pi server will get updated. And if this if if my the device which updated it goes off, then the and any other device comes on, they can sync. So, so the synchronization is close to perfect when we have a setup like this. And it's like a mesh; like every device can connect to every device, and that's how I added it in the in my sync thing. So, uh, I guess let's do a small demo. The resolution is between here, so I struggle a bit. This is how LastPass uh, application looks. This is a Linux build. You get a Mac build. You get a Windows build. Okay. Uh, and you do initially choose you to you have to go to database over here and open database. Or if you if you want to create a new one, you can create a new one. I'll show you my my existing uh, database and, and so the file is called database basically. Where all the passwords are saved. This is the path and it, it's a dot kdbx which is the encrypted file. So I will uh, enter my password. Okay. Uh, it is okay. So you'll get to see all my details, <laughs> but it's it's it should be fine. I think I'm out of USB ports. Let's plug out something. USB C. Do you need a hardware key for this, or you can do it without a hardware. You can do it without the hardware key. So, so there you can use one master password, which is always needed. Uh, you can use a software key, which is the key file. So you can carry it in pen drive and then just browse and uh, use that. That's a software key. I prefer a hardware key. It, it's more secure. And there's another whole path to set up. You can look up the documentation online. So I insert the hardware key, and I will say. Refresh. So it detects the hardware key that I have plugged in in this. And when I click unlock, right, it will start blinking because no application can access this unless I allow the application to access it. And I have to physically allow to access by tapping the uh, the the key. So I I click on unlock. It says please please present or touch. So I'll touch it. And ho hoping my master password is correct. It, it it has encrypted everything. So when you say touch it, it's not the fancy fingerprint and stuff. Right? No, no, it's not fingerprint. It's just that you are allowing the application to access. And I always plug it out because I don't want to leave it in and by mistake some other application taking some details from this. Um, yeah, so this is roughly how it looks. So uh, these are all the passwords you can add a new password. Uh, let's say. Some this uh, some website. What, what I'll do is I'll try to log in into something that I'm not logged into. I will switch to also. I'll switch to incognito. Let's let's log into Amazon and see. 
I'm on my uh, OG this that is slow. So what I'll do is I'll go to sign in. So you you do have a choice of uh, okay. I just instead of this set I'll do Gmail. Show you better. So you have a choice to install browser extension and the and the software that's running on a desktop connects to the browser extension and it transmits the passwords. But there, there are other ways as well. I just Instagram, sorry. <laughs> I, just, I just want to show you uh, uh, when you have both username and password, uh, I was just searching for this. So now you can enter both username and password. And what you do is, uh, I said Instagram, right? So I searched for Instagram. Right? And I'll just check if my screen is correctly selected. I'll select this. And yeah, it's selected correctly. And I'll use a key shortcut over here, like this. And this just enters my username. So it does a key, key it, it transmits key code. So it it actually types for me. It types my username, it types my path. It types the username, it presses tab types the password, uh, it presses tab and then it presses enter. And yes, you are logged in. So that's how, okay, I want to <laughs> show any more things. Uh, yeah, so that is essentially how it is, how it works. I can also show you how to create a new one. So what I will do is I will, I will lock this. So anytime you walk away, you can just lock it and now no one can access your passwords. I can say new database, I'll say passwords test, uh, live, demo, test, whatever, right? You can say continue. Now you can choose, depending on all the machines that you have, how many times you want the encryption to run. So you can, the encryption can run for multiple rounds, like encrypt. Uh, whatever is encrypted again, encrypt again, encrypt again, encrypt. So that's usually how encryption is done. And the same thing happens for decryption. <coughs> so roughly you can choose. I'll go to advanced settings, and you can also choose what uh, algorithm you want for encryption. AES is what default by default most of the password managers use. There's this is the newest one, ChaCha20, which is as good as AES, but uh, it 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 runs the same with the same speed on most of the CPUs. That's usually the so, so how many rounds you want? Is that the transformation? All layers will be with the same encryption. Yeah, 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 all layers with the same. Then you can choose an encryption round. So in the non-advanced, this we had seen uh, the bar uh, to drag. Uh, here you can check if I want to benchmark one min one second of a delay to encrypt or to decrypt my passwords. Then how many rounds I need? So it, it I just click this and it will, it will run a sample test and it will show roughly how many rounds it needs. For if I to take one second to decrypt, and you want it to take long to decrypt because you don't want people to brute force your uh, password file, right? Uh, so I, I don't want it to take one second to decrypt. I want it to take a little longer to decrypt. Let's say I, I want it to take I want it to take uh, two seconds. So I just double this value. So I get 48. Um, yeah, you can choose how much memory it should take, how many threads. Like these are some advanced 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 settings. Uh, and you can say continue. Here you can enter password. So I'll say test one two three. Never give this password. It's also complaining that you should not give this password. But so I can see what password I'm typing. And you can add additional protection. So in, in the additional protection, you can see it's taking a software key, which is a key file. Again, you have to generate this key file and you have to add it. And the other one is. Uh, challenge response. The challenge response is the feature of uh, this hardware key. It can be like YubiKey or OneDeKey. Those are the two brands. Uh, YubiKey is the one which I have. And I can say add challenge response. And if I scroll down, it says no hardware key detected. So I'll just plug this in. I'll say refresh. It will detect this. And uh, then I'll say it's And I'll say done. 
So it has created this. It is creating this file. I hope it. I don't overwrite this. Otherwise, all my old passwords are gone. <laughs> so I just call this passwords test. One two three. Okay, I'll just show you uh, if you can see. This is my sync thing. So I was talking about my sync thing, right? So this is the sync thing. Before I save, I'll just show you this. And over here, it shows my network. So it's connected to Elements Alchemy is my uh, this Linux laptop. It's connected to the Raspberry Pi, which is at home. Uh, it was connected to Samsung tablet, but now it's disconnected. It's not connected to my phone because it's on power saver mode. But what I'll do is I will just go out of the power saver mode and let's see if my Pixel 7 connects or not. It will take a couple of seconds, but it should connect. Yeah, see, so so that is what happens. Uh, what I'll do now is I will save this file. So it's already saving in my synchronized folder, sync folder. So I just hit save and it's plugin sync touch the key. So I will touch the key. And now if I go to my, again it's asking to touch the key since it's, 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 it's open. And now over here it should show you it being synchronized. I think it quickly synchronized because nothing much changed. So you can just go add password, let's say uh, Facebook, uh, you can say uh, that's not my Facebook username, uh, some password that I have and so on. Uh, yeah, and you just say okay, it will again ask me to tap the UB key, I tap it and it should save. So I just show sync thing if it is, it's not syncing. I think it's quickly syncing, it, it doesn't show that synchronization is going on. But yeah, this is roughly how it looks. But that's that's it for the live demo. So I'll just show the rest of the things. So on mobile, uh, I don't honestly know about uh, about iPhone, but for Android, there is key pass to Android. This is available on F Android uh, uh, app, app Store. And uh, I guess, yeah, that's it. So, yeah. thank you. I want to know about the, the, the sync thing setup. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, if I were to add a password on my phone without the internet, and then I add a password on my laptop, so then, and then both connect both the internet and both try to sync at the same time. Yeah, so it will, it will whichever one succeeds, uh, First. Last will override the one we succeeded before. Oh. Okay. So so that's that's the main reason I have the Raspberry Pi server. Mm. So. Uh, yeah. I, so that but that would you need to ensure then that your your online. Yeah. So Raspberry Pi server is always online of mine. So that's the reason. That's the only reason I have hosted that. So just to avoid race conditions. But yeah. but so yeah. It, it's same thing is a P2P network, but the way yeah, I have set up is the way I have set up is like, yeah. there's a there's one PR which is always on, which is kind of like a server. Hmm. But uh, is there any possibility of implementing a queue like let's say we take inspiration from Rabbit and queue or SQS? If you would implement a queue yeah. with which we take care of the deltas and then yeah, possible yeah. again like but that's impossible in P2P. That's 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 impossible in P2P. Yeah, there's, there can be some locking mechanism, but that has to be on the software level. So keep yeah. us exit. They have to implement it. Okay. So, uh, some software mechanism wherein they lock, so race conditions don't happen while writing to the file. But again, like too complicated. Till now, I have not encountered race since I have the Raspberry Pi server working. Uh, but before that, yes, the race conditions that you said they they can happen. That's it then. I, if anyone needs any help around this, you can ask me later. Yep. That's it. Thank you. Questions? Yeah. Uh, I mean, if you have any question, I am still open for questions. I don't know how much time is left though. <laughs> it's not your time. Yeah, Thanks.